Zai, 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 zai. You come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more. What you say? Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more. Oh, oh, woman, oh, woman, why you treat me so?
excuse me. Can we get a little more uh, vocal, vocals in this monitor right here? Thank you. 
Thank you, guys. Can you hear? Ah, there it is. All right, I'd just like to thank our jazz band, the Frank Just Collective, one more time if you could give them another round of applause with me. Thank you so much, guys. Um, well, I'm so glad that everyone could be here. Good evening and welcome to the 63rd Annual Robbins Awards Ceremony. Um, Thank you all for being finalists and all your contributions that you guys have done to the university. We're so grateful. Um, my name is Mackenzie Clark and I am the 2020 to 2021 Utah State University Student Association Predictions Director. <laughs> Thank <Woo>! you. <laughs> um, this evening, we, will, we are happy to be celebrating here with you in person and those joining, joining us via our broadcast stream. Um, the Robbins Awards are the most coveted of all Utah State University honors and the awards night is the year's most prestigious event. This year marks the 72nd year since William Bill E. Robbins was the student body president of Utah State University. He was the initial visionary for, the, for today's Taggart Student Center, which is this building, so that's really neat. Um, the Robbins name has stood through the passing years as a symbol of the best, that the best youth that the university has to offer. As a memorial to him and his family, the Robbins Awards continue as a tradition of Utah State University. The finalists and winners of these awards exemplify the very best of our university and all of them deserve our congratulations. Now I would like to introduce our MCs for the, for the evening. Cooper Lowe is a senior graduating in marketing and business administration this spring. Cooper has been around the USUSA block with his involvement in student events and other organizations. With the Student Orientation and Transition Services Office, the Huntsman School of Business, and his fraternity Sigma Phi Epsilon. Cooper doesn't just bleed Aggie blue, he even grows it on his, um, he even grows blue hair and you may have seen him at a football or basketball game with his blue beard. Unfortunately tonight his beard is a normal color but his Aggie pride is not compromised at all. Ethan Conley is a sophomore at Utah State University pursuing a degree in international relations and political science. Ethan is an active member of the USUSA Traditions Committee and was recently elected as our um, newest student advocate vice president for USUSA. Always quick with the quip and all around fun to be around, he is originally from Pleasant Grove, Utah. This explains his pleasant, his pleasant demeanor. We are both, they are both very excited to present to you these outstanding Aggies tonight. Welcome again to the 63rd Annual Robbins Awards. We would like to welcome, recognize the presence of Vice President of Student Affairs, James Morales, his wife, Angie, other campus administrators, family and friends of the finalists, and all of you lovely students. Tonight's ceremony acknowledges the best of Utah State's university's student body. All of tonight's finalists are examples of the university's continued mission of learning, discovery, and engagement. In order to stay safe during this evening, Cooper and I will announce each award. Winners are welcome to come to the stage while their bio is read. Winners that are not in attendance will receive their award next week. Okay, the first award. The Master Student Researcher of the Year Award goes to the Master Students Researcher. Dean McGuire, Ryan Vogues, Camille Weber. And the winner is Emma Doden. Emma was unable to attend this evening as she is conducting research. Emma Doden is an <laughs> what are you gonna do? Uh, Emma Doden is an ecology master of science student in the Department of Wildlife Resources in the Quinney College of Natural College of Natural Resources. She's originally from Wadsworth, Illinois, and received a Bachelor's of Science in Wildlife Ecology, Research and Management, and a Bachelor in Science in Biology from the University of Wisconsin, Stevens Point, in 2016. Emma's research with advisors Drs. Julie Young and Phaedra Buddy 
focuses on comparing the fates, space, use, and dam building activity of naturally occurring beavers and beavers translocated into desert river restoration sites. Her study assesses the efficacy of removing nuisance beavers from conflict situations and relocating them to degraded areas in need of beaver dams to increase water storage and improve native fish habitat. For two summers, Emma's monitored beavers in the Price and San Rafael rivers of Utah, learning the complexities of beaver translocation in a dynamic arid landscape, a new frontier for using beaver translocation in river restoration. Emma enjoys hiking, cross-country skiing, and horseback riding. After completing her Master's of Science, she plans to pursue a career as a state or federal wildlife biologist with a focus on fur bearer and non-game species conservation and management. Congratulations, Emma. Next up, the Doctoral Student Researcher of the Year Award goes to the doc Doctoral Student Researcher at Utah State University who has shown superior research capability and academic excellence. The finalists are <laughs> Leslie Ferrero, Irene Garusi Nahad, Spencer Hudson, Paul Kasuma, Whitney Livingston, and Max Roberts. And the winner, oh, go ahead, sorry, sorry, clap, 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 my bad. There we go, built up a little suspense. And the winner is Spencer Hudson. Spencer is also unable to attend this evening. He is also in the field conducting research. <laughs> a senior PhD candidate at Utah State, Spencer Hudson earned a bachelor's degree at Millican University in Decatur, Illinois, where he studied the physiological effects of bird feeding on wild passerines. Spencer continues to focus on the impacts of anthropogenic disturbances on wildlife health for his dissertation. In particular, he is examining the demographic, physiological, and genetic consequences of urbanization for reptiles. He has received multiple awards through both internal and external funding sources for his work, which has led to several peer-reviewed papers, presentations at professional meetings, and a departmental seminar as a visiting researcher. While pursuing his studies, he provided a wide array of opportunities for student education, research experience, and outreach at the university and secondary education level. For the remainder of his time as a PhD candidate, the career biologist, he plans to continue taking integrative, appro integrative approaches to answer eco ecological questions for the scientific community. Congratulations, Spencer. Next, we will present the Graduate Student Teacher of the Year. This award goes to the Graduate Student Teacher at Utah State University, who has shown superior research capability and academic excellence. The finalists are Martinique Chavez and Emmanuel May, Rachel Bryson, Michael Clayton, Juan Estrada, Sarah Hamataki, Eileen Lukens, and William Tidwell. And the winner is Juan Estrada. <laughs> Juan is much loved, we can tell. Uh, Juan is a fourth year doctoral student at the Clinical Counseling Psychology Program. His passions surround, his passions surround teaching undergraduate psychology courses and conducting clinical work. He's particularly interested in serving students and clients with marginalized identities. This interest is reflected in his research, which focuses on investigating protective pro properties of ethnic identity and promoting wellness in Latinx youth, as well as culturally adapting treatment for Latinx populations. Juan has taught five courses at Utah State University, including psychology of gender, behavioral assessment and intervention, and introduction to psychology. He conceptualizes courses as forms of intervention and focuses his work on improving academic success, student's sense of e efficacy, motivation to pursue graduate education, and general wellness. His attribute, he attributes his pursuit of doctoral education to his early experiences serving as a teacher fellow for Teach for America for two years and an elementary education in Thailand. 
It was in these experiences that he learned the unique power of reaching individuals in the classroom to promote positive change. Juan hopes to pursue a career that includes teaching students and serving community members from diverse backgrounds. In his free time, Juan enjoys connecting with friends and family, playing the ukulele, meditating, and volunteering at the Humane Society. Congratulations, Juan Estrada. We love the energy. We will now view a video from Molly Bars, a finalist for the Talent of the Year Award. I did my first show when I was 17. I was Fiona in Shrek the Musical, and it kind of happened by accident. I just randomly found myself in a theater class because I needed to have an elective. I was like, oh, this is a thing. I like this. And so I kept doing shows with my school. And then my senior year, I went to see a show at PCPA, which is the arts conservatory that I went to. I was sitting in the audience. It was the first live show that I had ever seen in my life. And I was just sitting there in the audience like, oh, like this is a thing that people can do. Like people can tell stories on stage. was so new to it and I just knew and I felt that there was still so much more to learn and so much more that I could glean and grow. They had those Monday auditions where you would go in and audition for these schools or audition for companies for their summer productions and USU came in and I think I was auditioned by Leslie and I went in and I was only supposed to be in there for like two minutes and I ended up being in there for about 10. And she coached me on one of my monologues and I was like, who is this woman? <laughs> I need to come here. Taking the little moments that you find and trying to create art and see art wherever you can. Because I do truly believe that there's beauty everywhere. You just need to choose to see it. And one of the things that I've noticed is that the older that I get and the more life that I experience, the better actor I am. Because there's more to pull off of. I've lived more life. That's one of my favorite things about it, is that it demands so much of you. There's no space for hiding, there's no space for fear. It's just about leaning in, saying yes, and telling the truth, and how to bring myself to the role in a really vulnerable and authentic way. My name is Molly Bars. I am a senior in the BFA acting program. That was awesome. That food was really good, huh, tonight? Pretty good? I uh, had to loosen my belt, but I, uh, I'm actually not wearing one, so. <laughs> All right. Now. So, we'll move on with the awards. This next award is the David and Terry Peak Prize Undergraduate Researcher of the Year. Uh, the award honors the individual student who has engaged in significant undergraduate research, scholarship, or create, creative activity that makes an impact on their field of study. The finalists are Noah Brager, Osvaldo Gonzalez, Jake Harrison, Jake Hogan, Hannah Johnson, Madison Vega, Joshua Ward, and Kimberly Young. And the winner is Noah Brager. Noah is unable to be with us tonight, but his brother Alex is here to accept his award on his behalf. Hopefully he, he knows. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Noah Brager is a senior majoring in both mathematics and physics. He was introduced to undergraduate research during the spring 2019 semester when he joined Dr. Andreas Malmendier's research team. 
His initial work focused on using mirror symmetry, a concept from the string theory, to prove a number theoretic result about K3 surfaces, special mathematical spaces. To fund his work, he applied for and received a College of Science mini-grant and an ERCO grant. His contributions to the project led to a publication, two regional conference presentations, and one colloquium talk at the University of Utah. Noah continued working with Andreas after his first project. Specifically, he constructed explicit geometric isogenies between three types of K3 surfaces. This project resulted in a paper that will soon be submitted to an academic journal and a presentation at the joint mathematics meetings. Noah currently works as a recitation leader for Calculus II and a teacher's assistant for differential geometry. After he graduates, Noah will spend the summer participating in NSA's director's summer program and hopefully enter a PhD program in the fall. Congratulations, Noah. I might add that Noah and Alex both have awesome hair. They're both brothers. It's true. If there was an award for that, they both would have won uh, a two-way tie. The now, the Scholar of the Year Award goes to the student at Utah State University who has demonstrated outstanding knowledge and skill in mastering subject matter and has made a singular contribution in research, application, and determination to succeed. The finalists are Maria Catalano, Aubrey Felty, Moana Fulmer, Andrew Kerr, Charity Parkinson, Nicole Ritchie, Miles Robertson, and Claire Weaver. And the winner is Andrew Kerr. If you're looking for Andrew Kerr, you'll find him in the laboratory at Utah State University. He has a love of mathematics and biology, and he found his niche in biomedical engineering. His research projects to date have included bone, plant, bone implant material validation, microfabrication for organoid culture, controlled neuron growth, and the development of a drug delivery system for cytomegalovirus. He loves research and is the recipient of over $6,000 in funding for his undergraduate research projects. He's also served as an undergraduate teaching fellow, as a Gear Up Camp mentor, as a presenter for Engineering State, and as a middle school math tutor. Andrew Kerr was raised in Kearns, Utah. He spent much of his time in high school writing, rehearsing, and performing music. He plays bassoon, alto saxophone, piano, and organ, and has performed with Utah Symphony. Since high school, he's appeared with the USU Symphony Orchestra, the Cash Symphony Orchestra, and the Logan Institute Choir. Give it up for Andrew Kerr. That's a lot of instruments. Next, we will announce the Legacy of Utah State Award. In fall of 2005, Utah State University mourned the death of eight students and one instructor who were killed in a rollover automobile accident while returning from an agricultural trip to Tremont in Utah. It was a great tragedy for the community and families involved. But the overriding message from the university and community was one of love, support, and hope. The following students, we believe, will also leave behind a legacy of love, support, and hope. These students have each excelled in university learning, discovery, and engagement. The finalists are Alec Nelson, Rihanna Cook, Kately Alizondo Childers, Christina Longjohn, Ashley Mori, Melissa Rasmussen, oh sorry, and Melissa Rasmussen. And the winner is Ashley Mori. After the passing of Ashley's husband, she returned to school after being a stay-at-home mom for several years with three young children. Ashley accepted the role of USU Society of Human Resource Management Club President for the 2020-2021 academic year. 
Ashley has not only developed into a strong leader, but has developed those she leads into strong leaders as well. She has overcome personal challenges to complete her degree, seizing the opportunity to immerse herself in on-campus involvement and service. She also saw the challenge of COVID-19 and virtual events as an opportunity to broaden USU's HR reputation by including other Utah schools in USU SHRM events and opening the Utah HR case competition to out of state state schools. USU was one of two schools vying for the opportunity to sponsor and co-host an HR case competition with the Utah HR Council. Ashley was so energetic about the opportunity that the other school willingly let Utah State take on the role. She radiates positivity with a focus on helping others to grow and develop as well. Through all of this, she has developed a strong identity as a loving mother, dedicated student, and effective leader. Congratulations to Ashley. We will now view a video from Sarah Naylor, a finalist for the Talent of the Year Award. My name is Sarah Naylor and I am an artist and a printmaker. I have always loved art. For as long as I can remember, I've grown up making art and creating things, whether it was coloring as a child or making fun crafts with family, and then moving on to more sophisticated school projects for art and also personal projects for my own enjoyment. Art has always been a major role in my life and has shaped who I am as a person. For me, the inspiration to create comes through the process by which I create. The ability to start a project and be able to start it from nothing but an idea and be able to see that through to the end of the idea and be able to see the final product at the end is something that fascinates me. Making art is a way for me that I'm able to express myself and be able to relate to those around me in the world and be able to express my own ideas and my emotions in a nonverbal way. I think the reason that I am so drawn to printmaking is because of the process that it involves. Printmaking is such a process-heavy medium that I have time to be forced to think about my own ideas and the reason why I'm creating what I am creating, because I have to think about the steps that it takes to get to the final product. And by doing this, I'm able to think about what I'm making and think about the deeper reasons behind it, which I think is part of what creates the true beauty behind the piece, is the reason for creating the piece in the first place. My work focuses on focusing on the physical and emotional aspects of dealing with mental illness and different aspects of mental health. Through a visual medium, I feel like I'm able to portray mental health in a way that is easier to communicate with others with because mental health is such a multifaceted topic and there's so many different parts of it that are difficult to discuss verbally. I feel like it's important to be able to portray those ideas and emotions through a visual medium in order to fully communicate the emotions behind the piece. Wow, that was amazing. That's awesome. Give it up for Sarah. Our next award is the Female Athlete of the Year Award. It is presented to the individual female athlete who has demonstrated exceptional qualities of athletic skill, sportsmanship, and determination, and brought recognition to the Utah State University athletic program. The finalists are Ashley Cardozo, Jessica Chapman, Autumn DeHard, Christy Frank, Maya Green, Garen, <clears throat> Gabriela Jimenez, Micah Rivera, and Zara Ryan. And the winner is Autumn DeHard. Now, unfortunately, Autumn is not in attendance, but we would still like to recognize her effort this evening. Autumn DeHard will go down as one of the greatest gymnasts in Utah State history. 
DeHard entered her stellar Aggie career by being named the Mountain Rim Gymnastics Conference Beam Specialist of the Year in consecutive seasons. She appeared in three NCAA regional championships and would have qualified for a fourth had it not been for the COVID-19 pandemic in, the tw in 2020 when she was named the MRGC Gymnast of the Year. She is the school record holder with 16 career beam titles. As a senior in 2021, DeHard helped lead the Aggies to three of their best all-time team scores in school history with a 196.775 at the Denver Tri-Meet, a 196.6 tied for fifth at BYU, and a 196.5 at Utah State. At Utah, I apologize. She also helped the Aggies notch a 196.225 at home against Southern Utah, a score that is tied for the seventh best team in school history. Up next, we have the Male Athlete of the Year Award. This award is presented to the individual male athlete who has demonstrated exceptional qualities of athletic skill, sportsmanship, and determination, and brought recognition to the Utah State University athletic program. The finalists are Felipe Acosta, Shaq Bond, Colton Cordingly, Kyle Morris, Namiesh Keita, and Cameron Todd. And the winner is Namiya Keda. Once again, Namiya could not be here tonight, but we will still like to hear a little bit about him. Namiya Keda rewrote the defensive record books at Utah State, setting records in single game, single season, and career blocks during his three years at Utah State. Keita finished the 2020-2021 season as one of four finalists for the Naismith Defense Player of the Year, given annually to the top defender in the NCAA Division I men's basketball. Keita led the nation with 97 blocks in 2020-2021 and was the only player in the Mountain West to finish the year averaging a double-double, turning in 14.9 points and 10.1 rebounds per game. Furthermore, Keita is one of two players in the NCAA since the 1992-1993 season to finish the year averaging more than 14.5 points, 10 rebounds, 3 blocks, 2.5 assists, and 1 steal per game. Keita was named the Mountain West Defensive Player of the Year twice in his career and earned AP Honorable Mention All-American Honors in 2020-2021 along with a trio of All-American all Mountain West honors. Congratulations, Namish. Thank you. Hello. Okay, the Gerald R. Sherrod Award is a unique award that is the only award selected by the Robbins Awards Committee. Gerald R. Sherritt worked at Utah State as an assistant to the president and then as the vice president of university relations in the early 1980s. He founded the USU Robbins Awards and was instrumental in the formation of the Old Main Society. The Gerald R. Sherritt Award honors a member or group of the university administration or staff who has, who has shown unsurpassed dedication and service to USU students and often goes unrecognized for their contribution. And this year's recipient is USU's Facilities Maintenance. Okay, sorry. In March of 2020, Utah State University transitioned to online classes, reduced the staff and faculty coming to campus, and canceled in-person gatherings. However, the Logan campus did not close down. Buildings, landscapes, and systems had to be maintained. Throughout the, the last year, the full, -time, the full and part-time staff employed by facilities maintenance continued to work tirelessly to keep campus clean, beautiful, and safe. From custodial staff to the landscaping crews, these individuals work tirelessly to keep the image of USU up to its traditional high standards. 
With the effect of the pandemic, they had an increased burden to clean more often in indoor spaces. Public spaces and classrooms needed to be sanitized at least twice daily. Several other forms of work were reprioritized to keep people on campus safe. The Robbins Committee feels that this group deserves the Gerald R. Sherrod Award for their outstanding dedication, commitment, and service above and beyond during this past year. Most of the part-time staff were comprised of our fellow students. Thank you to the 85 full-time and 130 part-time custodians, along with the 18 full-time and 150 part-time landscapers. We will now view a video from Ian Parvin, the final finalist for the Talent of the Year Award. My name is Ian Parvin. I am a violist in the music program at Utah State University. I started when I had to choose an elective to take in middle school. I ended up falling in love with the instrument. Most of the students here at Utah State have been playing their instruments for years and years since they were a little kid. But unfortunately, I was never able to have private instruction until I came to Utah State when I was playing in the symphony orchestra. And they invited me to come to their weekly studio classes. That's where I met Bradley Audison. He offered to give me a lesson, and this was one of the first lessons I've ever had in my life. After that lesson, he offered me a spot in the music program and said that I should double major. I've been double majoring in engineering and music. Most of what I have achieved on my instrument, I had to achieve alone. I never really thought that studying music was an option for me. I'm not really from a musical family. The strings on the viola aren't as long as they need to be to resonate the way that they're supposed to. So the viola is almost, it's more of an imperfect instrument. There's something about that imperfection that makes it sound really human to me. Violists have to work a little harder to get a better sound. I feel a great deal of pride in telling my violinist friends that I feel like I have to work harder to make a better sound. I think it's just the humanity and the voice of the instrument that I like so much about it. Awesome, Ian. It seems like string instruments like a full body workout. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The next uh, award for tonight is the Talent of the Year. Um, we just saw the talent. Okay. Award is presented to the individual who demonstrates an outstanding mental endowment of superior capacity in the field of music, art, or theater. The finalists are Molly Bars, Sarah Naylor, and Ian Parvin. And the winner is Sarah Naylor. As a student in the fine arts program, Sarah Naylor has been able to expand her talents and her passion for art at Utah State University. Growing up, she had always been interested in art and made the decision four years ago to pursue her passion for creativity and attend Utah State, where she fell in love with printmaking and joined the printmaking program. She's very grateful for the opportunities that have been presented during her time here, including showing in two nationally recognized exhibitions, participating in the USU Printmaking Guild as president, and becoming an undergrad teaching fellow. Being a part of the fine arts program has provided her a space to expand her creative problem solving skills as well as her artistic ability. After graduation, Sarah intends to utilize the skills and talents she has gained from being at USU to further her career in art. Give it up for Sarah. All 
Our next award is the Achievement of the Year Award. It goes to an individual or organization that accomplished notoriety by superior ability, distinctive effort, great courage, or heroic action. The finalists are Jen Ha, Series Committee, Business Council, and Aggie Radio. And the winner is Jen Ha. Jen is a proud Aggie through and through, embracing USU's mission statement of learning, discovery, and engagement. You can catch her on the third floor of the TSC and you'd be hard pressed to find her without her infectious, optimistic smile. Double majoring in psychology and global communication with minors in biology, linguistics, chemistry, and anticipatory intelligence, Jen strives for academic excellence while being vigorously engaged in research. US USA and service. This year, she served as the US USA's student advocate vice president and directed the government relations council in political engagement efforts. While at USU, She's been involved in four different research labs and earned opportunities to rep represent USU and present her projects at different research conferences at the local, regional, national, and global level. Jen is grateful for the opportunities USU has provided her with and hopes to inspire incoming students to discover their passions and engage during the college experience. Give it up for Jen. Our next award is the Organization of the Year Award. It is presented to the student organization that demonstrates the excellence of, of the organization's stated purpose and service to Utah State University. The finalists are the Student Events Office, the Business Council, Aggie Radio, and Huntsman Pro Sales. And the winner is Huntsman Pro Sales. <laughs> USU Huntsman Pro Sales is a market-driven sales organization which provides a connection between Utah State University students and business executives, managers, and recruiters throughout the state of Utah and the nation. Pro Sales students participate in training, leadership, professional development, and service activities that provide its members a strong foundation to be successful in the sales and marketing professions. ProSales is founded upon three pillars and guiding principles. One, extraordinary networking. Two, competitive national presence. And three, rigorous market-driven curriculum. Dedicated student members and the exclusive opportunity to compete in the local and national sales competitions Network with sales leaders, participate in career exploration trips, and receive certification and training in sales and marketing strategies, preparing them for a successful sales career. Corporate partners and sponsors developed by the student members, faculty, and staff provides graduates from USU Huntsman Pro Sales exciting career opportunities in a variety of industries. Give it up for Huntsman Pro Sales. The next award is the Val R. Christensen Service Award. Established in honor of Val R. Christensen's outstanding lifetime contribution to volunteerism. is presented to the student or organization whose volunteer service significantly impacted Utah State University and the community. The finalists are Campus Kitchen, Amria Farnsworth, Bryce Johnston, Operation Underground, and Operation Underground Railroad. And the winner is Campus Kitchen. The Campus Kitchen at Utah State University is a student-led organization dedicated to reducing food insecurity, hunger, and food waste throughout the Aggie community. The Campus Kitchen collects cooked food 
wastes and repurposes it into new meals for the on-campus Student Nutrition Access Center food pantry. The Campus Kitchen collects this food from local restaurants as well as USU Dining Services and Catering. The Campus Kitchen also collaborates with the Utah Conservation Corps Farm to receive fresh produce that is incorporated into meals produced and the USU Food Recovery Network to incorporate other types of food waste into our meals. The Campus Kitchen at Utah State University, officially launched in November of 2018, has been consistently producing meals every week since January 2019. Congratulations, Campus Kitchen. The following three awards honor the name of former student body president Bill E. Robbins and his family. His legacy exemplifies the very best of Utah State University. In 1954, Bill and his wife Geraldine took a trip to Colorado. On the returning flight, as their plane was taking off from the Denver airport, the plane crashed and both Bill and Geraldine perished, leaving behind their one-year-old son, Nick. Seven years later, the tragedy of the Robbins family was compounded when the small boy was fatally stricken with leukemia. The Bill E. Robbins Memorial Award has been awarded to the highest achieving student regardless of their gender since 1960. The addition of the Nick and Geraldine Roberts Award, Robbins Awards continue to fulfill this purpose, recognizing students that excel academically, have displayed outstanding leadership and dedication to Utah State, and possess traits that set them apart as a rare individual. Tonight, in honor of, the Bill, of Bill Robbins' dedication and service to Utah State University, we proudly honor the following students for their innovation, service, and personal contribution. The finalists are Sami Ahmed, Liz Drake, Brock Hardcastle, Jessica Ivey, Parker Jenks, Charity Parkinson, and Sean Weeks. And the winner of the Nicholas Robbins Award is Sammy Ahmed. <laughs> Sammy Ahmed was born and raised in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, before moving to Utah in 2006 at the age of 11. During his tenure at Utah State University, he has served as the USUSA student body president for two consecutive years, has been on the dean's list, is a member of the Bueller Scholars, the Huntsman Scholars, a John Huntsman Legacy Award nominee, a nonprofit entrepreneurship competition winner, and had an endowment scholarship named after him and President Cockett by the Alumni, Alumni Association. As a student body president during the pandemic, Sammy represented students' interests at countless meetings, helping to advocate for the needs of the student body. After graduation, Sammy plans on working in healthcare consulting at Leave It Partners. In the future, he hopes to get into an Ivy League institution's MBA program and plans to go back to Ethiopia and be politically involved. During his first year of college, he became highly interested in his home country's economic and political development. He realized that his ultimate goal was to create a mechanism for Ethiopian businesses to obtain capital and facilitate growth. Let's give it up for Sami Ahmed. The winner of the Geraldine Robbins Award is Brock Hardcastle. During the last four years at Utah State, Brock has developed a deep love for being an Aggie. He is the current USUSA Academic Senator for the John M. Huntsman School of Business. He has spent the majority of his time in college working with the Business Council to improve the student experience in this school, from running events to managing social media. During this last year, he has worked on a passion project to eliminate the cost of feminine hygiene products in bathrooms across campus in order to improve the Aggie experience for female classmates, staff, and faculty. Upon graduating, 
With a marketing degree with minors in Spanish and sustainable systems, he will be moving to Arkansas to work for General Mills. Brock Hardcastle, everyone. The next award is the Bill E. Robbins Memorial Award. It is an award, um, it's the featured award of the evening. It is presented to the student who represents the best Utah State University has to offer. And the winner is Sean Weeks. <laughs> Sean's passion for psychological practice and research brought him to USU's school psychology PhD program after completing undergrad schooling at the University of Kentucky and taking time to teach, work, intern, and volunteer across four continents. Under the mentorship of Dr. Tyler Renshaw in the school mental health lab, Sean's interest in contextual behavioral science, minority stress, substance abuse, and suicidality among adolescents has blossomed during his four years here in graduate school. Along with published research and clinical practice, Sean finds time to volunteer with local organizations to provide free mental health services and field-related trainings on special topics such as diversity, behavior management, and mindfulness. His commitment to service has also led Sean to sit as the student representative of his program, work as a student editor for the academic journal of the School Psychology Review, sit on faculty hiring committees, coordinate diversity events for the College of Education and Human Services, act as the service chair for the student affiliates of school psychology, and be involved in the inception of three new clinical practicum sites. After graduating, Sean plans to practice psychology in the Utah school system. Sean Weeks, everyone. Congratulations, Sean. Let's give it up for all of our other award winners tonight. Awesome. Well, that concludes our award ceremony tonight, the 63rd Annual Robbins Awards. And we thank you so much for sharing your time and celebrating the outstanding achievements of this year's Robbins Awardees. I hope you all have a wonderful evening.